So, ever wanted to add some juiciness to your Godot 2D games by implementing some screen shake? This can really bring your impact home, and it's actually quite easy to do. Now, just before we dive in, did you know that thanks to all of your amazing support, I just released an idle incremental game about stars and constellations called Lightem? It's available on Steam, for Windows, Mac and Linux, for less than 5 bucks, and it's basically designed to be a chill and relaxed experience, to learn more about the 80 plus real constellations, or just invent your own and create a unique night sky. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free demo, add it to your wishlist, share it with your friends, and if you try and enjoy it, you can also leave a review on the games page, this is the best way to help support this project. But anyway. Okay, so if you've worked in 2D before, in Godot, you might have noticed that by default you don't actually need a camera or light to see and render your scene. This is done automatically, contrary to a 3D scene that won't be visible unless you've at least got a camera 3D node, and that will probably benefit from some light and environment. However, in 2D, even if having a camera is optional, it can be useful if you want to better control your render, and for example in our case, add some extra movement to your viewport. Alright, so first off, make sure that you have a camera 2D node in your scene, and usually for screen shake, it's best to keep its anchor mode to drag center and play around with its offset property to properly frame your scene. Then attach a new script on this camera that you call something like screen shake. A quick and easy way to make this object accessible from anywhere in your code base is to make it a singleton. This makes sense since you usually have only one camera put to the scene and you'll most probably always have only one screen shake instance, anyway. Then add a shake function to your script that will trigger a new shake. If you want, you can declare some default shake parameters and pass in equivalent arguments to your shake function to optionally override the default for a specific call. But in any case, the idea is that when you trigger a shake, You'll first need to store the current offset of your camera, this way you'll be able to shake it around that reference point, and then a good trick can be to use a twin. If you're not too familiar with those, I've made a tutorial on that topic that you can find over here. And so this twin will update the offset of the camera during a given time, and move it around the reference offset point by a random amount that slowly decreases as time goes by. More precisely, the twin method built-in allows you to run a function continuously while the twin is alive, meaning for the given amount of time that you pass in as the last argument over here. This method will receive a variant input that goes from this start value to this end value over the twin duration. Here, what I did is that this input is the shake delay, or in other words, the remaining time before the shake ends. And so to get the random move, I'm using Godot's random utilities to get a random horizontal and vertical displacement, and of course I'm multiplying this result, which is between minus one and plus one, by my shake strength and by my remaining time, so that the movement gradually decreases. By the way, a cool thing of twins is that you can easily interrupt them, so here typically if your game needs to restart a new shake while another is still running, you can first stop the current one with kill, and only then start a new twin to avoid them overlapping. Finally, all that's left to do is somewhere in your code, access your singleton instance and trigger a shake, for example with a test input, or when your player takes a hit, or when you land from high above, or any other events that would justify a little extra shakiness. And well, there you go. I really hope you liked this quick tip, don't hesitate to react in the comments, and subscribe to the channel to get more videos. And of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support, and to you for watching. And as always, take care.